All right, so where we left off was figuring out the refracted ray, which is part of the whole 77 through 80, 76 through 80 question. Now, we were calculating the angle of refraction. What we said was, if you follow the incident light ray, the light ray coming up, that it will somewhere roughly head into this region, which would be quadrant one in math. Somewhere in this region, we should expect to see it. Now, where exactly? The thing about refraction is, what usually happens when you pass into a new medium is you get a change of angle, where the light ray appears to bend. You'll also get a change of speed and a change of wavelength, which we spoke about earlier. And the frequency and the period will both remain the same. Remain the same. Okay, so, roughly speaking, this is heading up here, but we will actually get a change of angle. This will appear to bend. How do we figure out that bend? We do it with what we call Snell's Law. Now, they gave us room to calculate this down here with questions 78 through 79. And so if you look, all of the materials, all the physical quantities that matter, they're all given to us. We're starting in water, so we know something about water. We know its index of refraction. And since we're starting in water, we can call that N1. N1 for water, you look it up on your reference table, and you will find that it is 1.33. The angle, while the light ray is in water, is always relative to the normal, 35 degrees. Since the light ray is entering air, we'll call that material 2. The index for air is, you can look it up on page 2 of your reference table, 1.00. And the angle at which it will travel in the air is actually what we are trying to find. Please put that degree symbol, and by the way, when you write what you're looking for equals question mark with the unit, that unit can save you. That unit actually counts as a unit for the answer. Okay, now, we need an equation that connects these, and we have one. In fact, we've been talking about the reference table. Let's pull it back up. On page 5, we have the index of refraction. That's the letter N twice. We have the angles. That's the theta. And they all come together with this equation. N1 sine theta 1 equals N2 sine theta 2. So... We can write our unsubstituted equation. And then we can substitute. Now, this is our first part two where we have to show all work, including the equation and substitution with units. And you've got two options. If you put a nice, neat list of givens with the units, then you don't have to include the units here. You still have to substitute. So we would still have to then write N1 is 1.33 times sine 35 equals N2, 1.00 sine of theta 2. That's what we're trying to find. But putting the degree symbol here, as long as you have it here, that's optional. Put it if you like, don't if you don't. Anyway, you solve this problem. And I'll actually do a bit of the math here in case it's somewhat unfamiliar to you. So if we start out, you can do 1.33 times sine of 35 degrees. Make sure that your mode is degree. Don't write this on your paper, but just make sure your mode is degree for the entirety of the regions. So 1.33 times the sine of 35 degrees gives you 0.7629 rounded. When you estimate or when you round a trig function, sine, cosine, tangent, go to at least three sig figs. I'd say go to four sig figs just to be safe. So you can have 
and it divides both sides by 1. So you're going to end up with 0.7629 equals sine theta 2. This math may be a bit unfamiliar to you. How do you actually solve this? You have to undo sine. This is not the angle. You have to undo sine. The way you undo sine is you actually inverse sine both sides. Inverse sine of sine, that goes away. Inverse sine of 0.7629, you could also just do it with the answer you have. And you will get 49.7 degrees, roughly 50 degrees. That's actually a complete answer. If for some reason you forget to put your degree symbol, if you have it here, it actually can back you up, it can protect you. Okay, now, come back up. Though this question didn't ask us to draw the refracted ray, it only asked us to calculate it, you may have to draw it. So, this is roughly 50 degrees. We can draw it. Let's practice that just in case. You can turn this however you want. Remember, trust your counting. Don't trust the numbers. So, bring your crosshair to exactly where the light ray and the boundary meet. Line up your edges so it's nice and neat. You don't want this crooked at all. Anything that's a bit off like this, where you don't line it up carefully, your answer is going to be more than two degrees off and you will not receive credit. So let's bring it so it's just lined up. Good. And we want roughly 50 degrees. Mistake would be jump to 50. The right thing to do is start at the normal line, as always, and count. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. That's 50 degrees. Put a dot there so you can be neat about it. That is where your refracted ray should go. Turn this so that you can use it as a straight edge. And draw your refracted ray. Now the refracted ray, it doesn't have a set length. You can go up to the dot, you can go short of the dot, you can go long of the dot, it doesn't particularly matter. But draw your refracted ray and make sure it goes through the dot or in the direction of the dot. Start exactly at the crosshair and you now have a very nice refracted ray. Now occasionally they will draw or they will ask you to draw or they will ask about wave fronts. Wave fronts were what we drew here. These arrows on the wave fronts are actually the ray. The ray is perpendicular to the wave front and it tells you which way it's going. So while these are all wave fronts, this is a ray. This is a ray. If you're given the ray, you could then go back and draw the wave front here. And so what you may do is actually figure out the wavelength and draw the wave fronts. I'll sketch the wave fronts here. I'm not going to use a scale, but as a loose sketch, the wavelength can be represented roughly by this spacing. Now, reflection, where you bounce back into the same medium, wave speed, wavelength, the angle relative to the normal, the frequency and the period all remain the same. RTS, they all remain the same. So on the reflected ray, this wavelength should be repeated. It's about this far. So I'll do my best to estimate. You could, of course, measure this with a ruler. But your wavelength, which is the distance from here to here, that's a wavelength. That's a wavelength. That's a wavelength. That's a wavelength. That should be the same if you're in the same medium. Reflection doesn't change that. Refraction, however, does. And so, while frequency and period stay the same, speed, wavelength, and usually the angle change. So how do they change? Actually, it's, it's somewhat intuitive. If you're going into a thicker material. Well, going into a thicker material means the 
index of refraction is actually going to increase. N goes up. That would be going from air to water, going into a thicker material. Well, use your intuition. If you're going from air to water, if you're moving through air and now you're going to move through water, are you going to speed up or slow down? And the answer is, what your intuition would tell you, you will slow down. Your speed will decrease. And conveniently, the wavelength and the angle do the same. The wavelength decreases, the angle decreases. And this angle, of course, is relative to the normal. So angle decreasing means, if you need a little clarification on this one, a little asterisk here so we have room, that means move toward the normal. That would be moving toward the normal. If, on the other hand, you go into a thinner material, that means the index of refraction decreases. That actually is the problem we did, going from something like water to air, or diamond to water. Well then, when you move to a thinner material, as you might expect, the speed will increase, the wavelength will increase, and the angle will increase. Now this one, an increase in angle, will double asterisk it. That means move away from the normal. Now what is all this toward the normal, away from the normal? Well, we can see it right here. You notice the light ray comes in at that 35 degrees. And if you were to continue the light ray, if you were to follow the light ray straight up through the paper, you would roughly follow this path. Now you notice the actual path is a bigger angle. It moved, if you watch up here in this quadrant, it moved away from the normal. So here's where it was, but here's where it is. That moving away from the normal is a bigger angle. That's what happens when you go into a thinner, lower index material. And we did. We went from water to air. So here we're showing the angle. We can also show the wavelength. The wavelength should also get bigger for our example, which means you don't draw these as close to each other. You actually draw them farther apart. Now keep in mind the length of them this way is irrelevant. It's the spacing this way. That's the wavelength. That is now bigger. Now I did not do this to scale. It would not be this much bigger. However, it's just giving you an idea of what's happening. Now we can't show you the speed on the piece of paper, but it also goes along with it. Okay. That's a nice general review of waves based on the June 2013 regions. And we can look at another region soon and you'll see it'll be a much quicker conversation.